This is the Jeep Gladiator Rubicon, and it is an off-road legend in many minds. For some, it is a gateway vehicle to seeking epic adventures. There are a few Jeep traditions that most folks don't know, and today I want to find out firsthand what it's all about. While we're out here, I also want to experience the extreme limits of the Rubicon's true boundaries. So strap in and buckle up for the ride. Hey, welcome back everybody. Thanks for joining us. Today, we're gonna go meet up with my friend who, woo, Just like that. Today, my son and I are gonna go meet up with my friend and we're gonna go off-roading in his Jeep. He just bought some brand new tires and he invited us along to check it out on this rainy day. So my buddy says that this rainy weather gives him the perfect conditions to test his new tires. I guess we're just going to have to find out and see whether we get stuck in the mud or whether it's just a blast out there. All right, you ready for this? Let's do it. We've got the EcoFlow Glacier mini fridge ready to keep everything cool and it's daisy chained into this inverter in the back of this Jeep. Jeeps love to drink gas. This thing's getting like 14 miles per gallon. So we're going to stop here and get some gas. Did you have fun riding that Jeep? Yeah. Was it your first time ever riding in a Jeep? I don't know. You don't know? I think it is, you know? Got some snacks for the road? Yep. So I got <laughs> beef jerky. I've got some fruit and some pickles. What's the uh, address? Busted Nuts Off-Road Park? Collins, Missouri? Uh, no. Uh, Busted Nuts? Yeah, there's a Busted Nuts Off-Road Park in Collins as well. No. Lake of the Ozarks Off-Road Park. And Gravois? Gravois? Uh, Gravois. Gravois? Route 185, Gravois Mill. Gravoy yeah. Mill. My question for Jeremy today is, how did you get the name for your Jeep and why do you have a name for your Jeep? When I decided to go with the Jeep Gladiator, I just couldn't figure out how to fit Smash into it. And then I was like, what's a cool name that kind of fits my personality? I've got a term that I use synonymously with idiot and it's Jack Monkey. And I was like, that that's Jack Monkey. And then it, it just fit Jack Monkey Jeep. And so then, boom, the Jack Monkey Jeep was born. And I don't think I'm an idiot. I don't think you're an idiot if you buy a Jeep. I like the way it sounded and it fits my personality. Just kind of free flowing, off the cuff, high energy. That's how I got Jack Monkey Jeep. When we were at that stoplight waiting to get on the interstate, you pass another Jeep and the lady in the Jeep waved at you. And uh, that's something like I see with motorcycles, but is that something that Jeep folks do as well? Yeah, absolutely, the Jeep wave. Typically, Jeepers, we're cool in our Jeep, so we drive with one hand, and as you're driving, you see another Jeep, just like in the motorcycle culture, you throw the wave out. Well, you keep your one hand on your Jeep, and you just throw the two fingers up, and that's, that's a Jeep wave. So we made it to the destination for today, which is the loop here at Lake of the Ozark, okay. and I just filled out a waiver for myself and my son so that we can enjoy some of these trails out here. I'm gonna buy this hoodie. Awesome. I've got him, he's 11. Okay, he's free. Do you have any uh, named obstacles in here? I do, so I've got special stuff, so like Michael Hill people love, the log hill here. Okay. Rocky Top. So here, um, I have almost 600 acres here. It goes from mild to wild. You know, okay. I've got from your hills 
be your rock climbs to, you know, valleys. And then we have a second location. I don't know if you all know about uh, the Loop 2. No. So it is 12 miles from here. Okay. Um, that has almost 1,200 acres. 1,200 acres. So it's even twice part. But the problem is over there is more tighter trails. Yeah. Because this one was logged. We never dreamed it was going to be an off-road park. Okay. <laughs> and then here we are. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So I had to rock the, uh, the loop of the leg of the Ozarks hoodie. I picked one up. Jeremy here picked one up and we all signed our waivers so we're good to explore the trails out here at the loop before we step off we've got zach in his two-door jeep and his radio and then we've got the gladiator also with a radio and they're on the same frequency so we can keep in contact with each other while we're going through the trails so i only have the one arb easy deflator so we got to do eight tires with one tool so it's going to take a little bit of time you can save yourself some time they make these little tools that you can set the psi if we had a kit of eight of those we'd be out of here and on the trail a lot sooner the way this deflator works is it has a center tool that's pulling the valve stem core out and it's just letting that air come straight out of the valve stem once you've got it to the psi PSI that you want it, screw the core back into the valve stem, and then you remove the deflator. It's that simple. So we're going from about 42 PSI in those road tires down to about 18 so we can get a little bit better of traction out on those dirt trails. So radio on at all times, okay? Uh, if you need to stop for anything, just come over the net. At least four high everywhere you go. If you're gonna do an obstacle, go to four low. If you get stuck, you got the winch. I've got all the kinds of recovery gear. Do you have anything in your Jeep at all? None, none today. We won't try anything that we don't feel confident in. Any questions on that, just come over the net. If you got any issues, we'll stop and figure it out. And I'm pretty sure I just heard him say, if you have a big ego, pull that out today. Uh, so you can show all your buddies how good you are at getting stuck. Ego is only going to get you in trouble out here. Keep that thing quelled. If you don't have the confidence to do the obstacle, don't do the obstacle. And the question is, can this massive Jeep tackle that massive hill? All right, Jeep's locked, we're going up. Oh, this is a lot steeper. Jeep handled that hill no problem. What was our max grade on that? 25 degrees. Jeep Gladiators, uh, especially Rubicons, any version of Jeep has this little button called the downhill assist. And if you look at it, it looks like a duck. So we push the duck, I move my selector switch over to manual, and now if I let off the brake, the Jeep is gonna drive down the hill at 0.6 miles an hour. And if I wanna go faster, I just simply pull back to the plus and it adds 0.6. So now we're gonna descend this hill at 1.2 miles an hour. I am not covering the brake, nor am I covering the gas. This is all done by the computer. moving forward. We're gonna look for a good little obstacle to come down. I think we're gonna stay to the right.
Yeah, you're all right. You didn't hit it that hard. You're gonna hit rocks out here. All right, guys, we're about to try Missy's hole in the Rubicon, and we don't know how deep it is because it's so muddy here that as I'm trying to get up to the spot, it uh, it's too slippery for me to test it. And so what we're gonna do is let the Rubicon show us how good it can work through this mud puddle. Mm -hmm. I'm center. All right, so that scenario right there is the whole reason you should always wheel with a second vehicle because I don't have max tracks uh, to bury under the wheel to get me traction to get off of that high center area that I was. Uh, so we would have been out here just collecting sticks trying to figure something out or actually digging it out But because we had a second vehicle we could just hook a strap up too easy pull me off I'm gonna try this again. I'm just gonna go a little left of the center. So if I can get over that high center Again! I'm up off the ground, aren't I? So I think he just said it, but I really want to reiterate, this is exactly why when we go out in places like this, you always want to have another vehicle with you. Take that, yep, back towards the Jeep. We've got the green strap that's essentially protecting this tree. We can see where some folks have just gone straight with their wire around the tree. And then going into this King Pro adapter, it's like a synthetic fiber rope that has a low inertia. So if it happened to break, if it went straight, the rope would just snap and drop. Hopefully the rope is long enough to get back to the Jeep. Is that it? So what we're doing here is, uh, is really just testing out the the winch so uh, we could run the winch straight out around a tree saver and then pull ourselves out but the winch is 9500 pounds of pulling strength and i saw a neat little trick where you run a tree saver with a snatch block and it it doesn't double the winch's pulling power but it acts as a lever and it gives it more capacity, if that makes sense. I, I, I'm not a in, uh, mechanical engineer, so I don't understand it. But basically, it's more efficient at pulling. It puts less stress on the winch, I think. And it should pull us out pretty quick. So I'm now going to run my, uh, my flat link back to the Jeep. And I'll take the soft shackle and wrap it around the, uh, around the hard shackle. And then we'll tighten this all up and we'll come back and show you how it's all set up. What that means is the yeah, Jeep yeah. weighs what it weighs. It's not going to weigh yeah, less. Enough. And the winch has Dude, the pulling capacity of 9,500 pounds. But when you double that rope up, each of those legs of the rope essentially gets half of the weight of whatever the Jeep is going to exert against it while it's pulling. Oh, the front, the front's oh, off. That's <laughs> None of your tires are Hit your part. What is going on? Hit your parking brake. <laughs> Use your parking brake. That's a good idea. Thank you. Don't let go. Yeah. Alright guys, so I guess Missy's wet spot is just not gonna happen. The winch is stuck full out right now. Like we said, always travel at least two vehicles. So all we do is we have the tow rope connected to the hooks on the rear of the Jeep that we're covering. Other than the same hooks on the recovery jeep. Pretty simple. Just make sure you have the right rope, the tow rope. So uh, everything is just communication. We have radios from both jeeps. So we'll get the tension and we'll get it tight. And then we'll make sure we're both ready to go, put it in reverse. And both give it a bit of gas to go in reverse. So pretty simple. Make it happen.
So now we're down to basically one recovery asset and we're also getting a little limited on the daylight remaining. Hey, so with recovery assets, we started with two, which meant, which, uh, meant that we had one. So now that we have one, we have about a half left. <laughs> if you have two, you have one. And if you have one, you have none. So now in that math, we basically have none, but we actually have a half because we can make at least one more snatch attempt. And hopefully that green rope doesn't break or it pulls us out of anything we need to get pulled out of. So I guess we learned that even the most well-equipped vehicles do have their limits. Hey, so this baby Jeep back here is carrying its weight. Doesn't matter who's out here, what kind of vehicle. You're out here on the trail having fun. Like we said, come in pairs at least. Um, and all vehicles can help each other out. It doesn't matter what kind they are. Was it still fun even though kind of it didn't work out the way we wanted it to? Absolutely. Um, it, and again, it comes down to I have other people with me and I have another vehicle. So, you know, I went ahead and took a chance. I tried. Uh, the equipment just failed on me. And sometimes that happens, but we can still have a good time. And it doesn't seem like it's that difficult of a problem. Always have a backup. Uh, and if you don't have a backup, don't try it. But that's part of being on the trail is you learn what you can and can't do. And as long as you don't break anything major, it's always a lot of fun. I'm glad I got the insurance for the drone because I made contact with that tree about 50 feet up right there and oh. crashed it and it's shattered. It did it? Well, I guess I got my money's worth out of that drone and I did get the crash replacement, but it was absolutely worth the cost. We got some excellent drone shots and the drone does have active uh obstacle avoidance, but without the trees on the branches, there's just nothing you can do to prevent those little crashes except of course flying in an area where there are no obstacles all right so one drone down one winch down but another thing that i thought about was jeepers like to have a lot of fun you want to tell me a little bit about that yeah much like motorcycle clubs every area in the united states will have uh, a local jeep club uh, and it you know quick google search facebook search uh, will usually yield the results of that and um, some of the bigger areas will have multiple jeep clubs some of the smaller areas will have limited numbers but uh, they all have their own different um, uh, criteria to get into the jeep club nothing crazy uh, but they do a lot of good things they like they'll come and they'll do an annual run to raise money for breast cancer awareness or for the homeless at Christmas time or whatever. They do a lot of runs, um, you know, some of them get more elaborate and they'll, they'll do four wheel runs eight, 10, 12 hours away from their home location. Others just pretty much stay local. Uh, some of them do a lot of charity work and sometimes doesn't even re uh, revolve around four wheeling. They like the Jeep club where we're from they do Taco Tuesday. So every Tuesday night, they meet at a local Mexican restaurant and you can show up and bull crap with the, the Jeepers and then you can get into the Jeep club. Like I said, every single one has their own different requirements for getting in and being a member, but it's a lot of fun. It, you know, it's it really exacerbates the, the culture and, and uh, the off-roading and the outdoor community. So that's honestly a fun way for me to get out and try off-roading without buying a off-road vehicle if you are used to watching my channel you know that i love to feature others in my videos so give a shout out to jeremy and zach you know spam the comments with hi jeremy hi zach uh, let them know that you appreciate them taking us on this uh, journey with them off-roading silver jeep didn't get stuck at all today did it never got stuck first time out here i know there was some good instruction and guidance from the start 
and really have to put your ego aside, take your time, take it slow, you'll be fine. So something I noticed you don't have that I've heard that a lot of Jeep folks do is I don't see any ducks on the windshield, mm. but I've definitely seen a lot of Jeeps with a lot of ducks in them. Yeah, so uh, I do. I have a metric F ton of ducks uh, and they are, they are hidden away right now. Uh, because I knew it was going to go four-wheeling. And then I have ducks that I hand out myself. As you see, the Jack Monkey Jeep's colors are blue and green. I'm not a Seattle fan, but I just like this color scheme. And I have blue and green ducks that I hand out to Jeeps that I like. I've actually given one to Zach. The duck thing, I have no idea where it came from, but uh, it's just kind of a cool little interesting thing. Now, there is kind of some controversy with some Jeepers with that. They don't like it. They think it's dumb or whatever but most people if you just leave a duck they'll either take it or they throw it away if they're one of those jeepers that don't like it but i collect every duck that i get and i keep it in a crown royal bag fitting in the back of the jeep and i got a feeling that if you don't like the ducks you probably drink tea in the morning which is okay it's not coffee and, and it's probably <laughs> unsweetened tea as well yeah it's unsweet <laughs> <laughs> just a small collection this is the first ever duck i got really oh, small little baby thing. duck yeah baby duck um these are the two i just got recently some lady handed me this and then this one was in walmart uh lady got out she had a uh, um a gladiator a red gladiator and it says you've been ducked and then on the back it's handwritten it says merry christmas love hippie chick have a groupy have a groovy day so and she literally sounded like a hippie chick. I may actually find a, uh, try to find a company that can custom make a Jack Monkey Jeep logo. And you know, so it'd say, you've been ducked by Jack Monkey Jeep. Now that's obviously a cost, but I do give out blue and green ducks. Now let's get the duck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> make like a tree. You're ducking right. <laughs>